Hello, welcome back to a Flywheel Films video. Um, by the way, got some merch happening. Finally, finally, been talking about it forever. I was like, let's do merch madness in March, and then I was out of the country for like the whole month. Yeah. But um, it's now available on below the video or somewhere. But um, <laughs> if you care at all, <laughs> I think we care more than anyone. Um, but yes, welcome back to Flywheel Films. We are talking about pricing today because some news came out on the Miata, and I think it generates headlines because on the one hand, oh my gosh, for the first time ever, the Miata starts above $30,000. Yeah. Ugh. It's but crazy. what some people don't think about is inflation. Inflation, yeah. And where has the Miata started previously adjusting for inflation? So how much effective money does it actually cost? And there's some interesting facts and figures in here. Austin actually did a podcast did a with Justin. Podcast, yeah. So check out the Flywheel Film Show for an even deeper, longer dive on this kind of thing and just some fun that they had over there. But we wanted to at least do a quick video on just if you're in the market for an indie, you're thinking about buying a brand new Miata. Of course, we can always talk about the NC Miatas. I mean, actually, he might may or may not be looking at NC Miatas right now. But um, if you're not looking at the used market, like we live in the used market, <laughs> um, we are going to talk about new stuff starting now. And by starting now, I mean after the title. Uh, <laughs> so, starting at $30,170. Interesting fact, if you go to the Miata web, the Mazda website, it says starting at 28 something, and then you click build, and then it shows the $30,000. sorry, I didn't notice that. I think it was probably the jump, it probably just hadn't been updated yet on their like landing page. Maybe, and Mazda notoriously shows usually two years of Miatas that you can build. And so maybe they're still thinking, oh, configure a 2023 one yeah, because be. they still sell those. But um, if you yeah. want to know the differences between this year's and last year's, we did do a whole video on that. We so did. the ND1 versus the ND2, there were some updates and changes. Yep. Notoriously, the engine, that was the big, big one. Yep. Um, now it makes 181 horsepower, which is really solid, like for a Miata um, or for any car. I mean, it's lighter than an NC, uh, and uh, also more powerful, and people just love it. Journalists love the ND2 Miata. ND1 is still a great Miata. Our friend Jared has one. Uh, we just did a video on that as well. But definitely check out our other video on the deep dive of ND3 changes. Um, so we'll mention those here and there. But um, yeah, the big headline was the starting price being over $30,000. Now, um, to quickly go over the pricing, uh, I guess we could mention the Sport is $30,000, um, but then it jumps up to the Club for thirty four dollars and change, then the Grand Touring with thirty five. dollars Now, those are soft top models. If you jump to the RF, the pricing flip-flops. The starting price is the Grand Touring at thirty eight, dollars and the Club at forty, almost forty two. dollars And that's because the Club RF comes standard with BBS wheels and the Recaros and Brembo the Brembo Recaro, the yeah. BBB package. BBB. Brembo BBS R. or BBR package. Yeah. yeah. Uh it's yeah, I think which we is set up in the last video too. Which is <laughs> which is so cool. Like honestly club yeah. club with the BBR package is chef's Very kiss. Cool. Very, very I, cool. Fun fact, I, I was close to buying one um instead of my precious NC, which is wild. But then you decided to spend half the money on Yep. Twice the car. Ooh, yeah. no, just kidding. It's not twice the car. Because back then, I, I bought I almost bought a 2019, which is the ND2 yeah. Club, with the BBR package, and it was 28 grand. Um, now to buy a new one, it's 42 grand. Um, but so there's a Miata in various price brackets. But what I do want to mention, I love bringing up the devil's advocate argument because the headlines are like, oh, the Miata is more expensive than it's ever been. It's but, true every year. Let's just start there. Yeah, it's true every, <laughs> every year. year. Every car price across all cars it's goes up. More expensive than it's unless ever Unless you're yeah. weirdly Tesla sometimes. But yeah. um, we're not here to talk about Tesla. In fact, every time I mention an EV, some of you in the comments just get hateful. Uh, <laughs> Austin, Ooh. tell us why the $30,000 threshold is not as big of a deal as we think. Yeah, so this is really interesting to dive into. And Justin, who if you've watched the Fiable Film Show or listened to the Fiable Film Show, um, he is the third voice on there. Um, he's, he's our finance guy. He's our finance guy. And he talked a little bit about inflation and his definition was really, really great of like inflation is just the uh, loss of purchasing power, essentially. Um, and we did some calculations with inflation for the original Miata when it came out in 1989 at the starting price of $13,800, which right now it's like 
That sounds so cheap. Less than half price. But you have to remember that's in 1989 when a new F-150 started at $11,000. Uh, so we did a whole comparison between those two. So if you're interested in that, like we said before, listen to that. But what's very, very interesting is the starting price of 13.8, if you account for a uh, an average inflation of 2.6% a year, in today's money, that 13.8 is actually $32,700. So, so effectively cheaper than, so, or sorry, more expensive than today's starting price. Yeah, it's like two grand more. So you're you're saving money if you buy a new Miata. And it's basically. not just the base. It's not just the base model. Back then they had the SE starting at eighteen. It's like right around eighteen grand. Which in today's money is forty five. So over forty five. Yeah. So it, it's pretty crazy how. In nineteen eighty nine money, the Miata was was pretty expensive. Yeah, I mean it. I'd say expensive, but actually comparable to today's pricing, just a little bit more than today's pricing, yep. but not much more, just a little bit more. But I don't know, I, we, you know, we'd have to study more of the market of the other options that were available then. In today's world, the Miata is like one of a couple sports cars you can buy. I mean, really its main competition is like BRZ, GR86, those kind of things, which are not convertibles. Yep. And so if you want a convertible, it's kind of the Miata. Yeah. I mean, there's some other companies, but this, like, if you want a two seat, fairly raw sports car, this is pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, other competitors have come and gone, and I think it would be fun to do future episodes on just talking about the S2000, the GM vehicles, like um, the Solstice, Solstice Sky. Saturn Sky, Opel, Roadster, all those things. And um, that would be interesting to talk about and how they came and went. Yeah. Uh, the Miata has stuck around for now, yes, 35 years. In fact, Miata Reunion in California this year, 35th anniversary. I'll be there. It's going to be epic. It'll be awesome. Um, you have, I might be there. You have six months to sign up. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, But yeah, the F-150 thing, though, that's interesting. Yeah, so we found that the F-150, because like very likely demand is the whole reason, but uh, in today's money, the F-150 should start at uh, around like $27,000, and you can't get an F-150 for under thirty six, and that's just a basic XL wharf truck. Yeah. Um, so if you look at like the starting price of the Miata now in 2024, compared to some of the other vehicles that have, uh, gr have been around for the same amount of time, it's very interesting to kind of do that comparison to see, and not to mention the fact that you can spend ninety thousand dollars on a F one fifty. It's insane. Yeah. It's absolutely like you could buy for the price of a F one fifty Platinum. You could buy a Miata and an F one fifty. You could buy an F one fifty and an F one fifty. Like it's it, it's insane. It is wild how much you can spec cars. I mean, I actually went just to have fun one time I went on Porsche's website yeah. and I built a Taycan. The starting price was like 95,000 and I built it to be 220,000. I was like, I spent more on options than the actual car itself. You, you optioned nearly two Taycans to the Taycan. <laughs> like that's yeah, crazy. But that's a good point. So back in 1989, the Miata was more expensive than F-150. Now the F-150 is more expensive than the Miata. Yep. I do think people's priorities have changed. Yeah, Everyone thinks absolutely. they need a truck now, yeah. but I don't know. You don't necessarily need one. That's that's the point. But also, yeah, I just I like to pick apart some of these arguments of like I think there's some not crazy negative um like how, how headlines out there, they're just saying, Oh, the Miata's getting more expensive and it's like, well, no duh. It's like Apple every year saying, This is the best iPhone we've ever made. And it's true, but also Duh. Yeah. Uh, so I I wanted to min bring this video up and talk about some of the pricing because sure it does start at a higher price, but also cars just also progressively get better. So what you get in your Miata obviously is more and more every year. In fact, this year, I mean, I have to go watch our last episode, but like you get a bigger touchscreen as standard, like 8.8 .8 inches instead of the previous small seven inch one, which is cool. Some lighting upgrades. Some light upgrades, just very minor, it's like very, very minor styling stuff. Um, I think, yeah, every single Miata with a manual is a limited slip differential now, which is great. Which is great. Because that's how they should all be. That really, really, and honest, honestly, I think some people with the the automatic wish they had the LSD, and like I'm a weird automatic sympathist. Is that a word? Uh, Sympathizer. <laughs> so, yeah. So I I do a lot of. I mean, it's it's great. I mean, the internet's just toxic in general. But yeah. if if someone posts their Miata and it's like I love my automatic Miata, you're gonna see so many comments. So They're like, so much that's hate. terrible. And it's like, yeah. okay, some people can't 
drive an automatic or can't drive a manual because of a leg issue, like a health issue, or maybe they just literally don't want one. Yeah. And I would rather them be in a Miata with an auto than like a Honda Accord. No offense, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's valid. But you are definitely seeing some good upgrades with the new ND3. Um, and for the money, yes, $30,000 is a lot for a car. But I think the other important thing to talk about is the average price of a new vehicle is well above forty five. Um, depending on where you look, it's anywhere between 47 and like 52 for the average new price, uh, new vehicle price in America. Um, so $30,000 seems like a lot for a fun car, but um, the ND Miata is, I think, practical enough for most folks to where it could very easily be your only car. It is refined enough to where you could drive it every day very comfortably. I, um, I do that. <laughs> yes, Jordan, Jordan does that. Um, so, yeah. I was I was trying to think. So, how would you, if you were in the market for a brand new Miata, what, how would you spec it? Because we're looking at the sport model, the club, or the Grand Touring. If you're looking at soft tops, or you just have the club and Grand Touring. If you're looking at RF, and if you want an RF, you're forced into the BBR package with the Grand with the art with the club. Uh, whereas a soft top, you could just get the club, but not the actual. BBR package, which if that's the case, I don't know why you would get the club. Like what is the benefit of getting a soft top club versus the Grand Touring if you're not getting the BBR package? That's what I'm looking into right now. Their, their site, fortunately they don't have like a crazy amount of options, but it is a little confusing sometimes. It's like, okay, what are the actual differences? The club gets um, a little bit of a spoiler, a little bit of an uh, air It's like a factory dam. arrow. Yeah, like what well, we'd say, like subtle factory arrow stuff. So I guess you do get that. You do get the 17-inch wheels. But then it's like, well... And the bill sheets too, right? Those are only... I think, yeah, you're right. Those are probably... Only available on the sport or on the uh, Grand... The club or the Grand club Touring. Thing. And, oh, interesting. So if you want that deep crystal blue mica, which is a gorgeous color, you have to get the club. They don't have the Grand Touring with that, which huh. is... I don't understand necessarily why they have certain specs as options in the way that they do i don't understand but yeah curious if you guys want to throw in the comments what you think of the pricing and also how would you spec your car um also going club you get the bose system uh, which i think is definitely worth it i would probably if you're looking at a miata the sport starts at thirty thousand. honestly just spring for the club like get the club if you're getting a brand new car it's already that much money. Just add a little bit more money on a something that will resell better if you care about that. Yep. But also, I think the features and even the looks subtly and like pick the color you want. You just get more options for that. So that's what I would do. Um, but yeah, you could get the club with the BBR package, which is kind of nice. Whereas the Grand Touring is definitely a bit more comfortable. Like yes. the Grand Touring leather seats are great. genuinely next level. Yeah. The Recaros are really good too, but I know there's some folks that aren't a fan of the Recaros for how they how they fit. Yeah, um, they are definitely sporty. Yes. Yeah. Um, and if you want an automatic, actually, your only option is a Grand Touring, by the way. So yeah, which honestly I think kind of makes sense. If you if you're wanting the sportier like club situation, you may as well get the manual because that's probably what you're into. Otherwise, looking at the the site here, it's kind of fun to build cars, even if I'm never in the actual market for them. But yes, uh, confirmed. Bilstein's on the club, but also the Grand Touring gets Bilstein's. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> There's subtle differences, but definitely let us know in the comments what you think and what would you get. Or are you not even interested? Is this price bump and the subtle differences of the ND3, does that suddenly make you out of the market? Are you now looking at ND2 for a bit cheaper? Are you even considering an ND1 or a prior generation? We are curious to see where all of you guys are as far as that goes. Because we know a lot of you are Miata enthusiasts. Awesome. Maybe you don't even have a Miata and you've thought about one. We're curious. What would you get? Any last thoughts? Buy an NC. <laughs> <laughs> More of the story. Buy an NC. Buy merch. We'll see you next time. Why I clap? That's for the beginning. Uh, Sync the audio. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
De... <risa> venga, venga, venga. Oh. Yeah, now, yeah. now we can start. Now we can start.